has God helped you in the months that are past? Have you received any help from God at all? If we put our trust in men, they can disappoint us. In fact, he tells us, man is limited. God of Jacob, who is our God, he lives forevermore. He is our helper. He is our helper. For anyone who we believe, the days have come. From wherever you are listening to me, God has sent me to you and to let you know you shall be remembered for favor i say you shall be remembered to be favor giving my adoration is worthy to be praised is worthy to be exalted there is none like him he's the beginning is the end can we just exalt the name of the lord mighty god Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, can you just open your mouth and worship this God? At Bani Lagda Tom, Lake Abu Sotele Roshapari, Alika Zigadaria, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, El Shaddai, Emmanuel, we worship you, we exalt your name. We magnify your name. Thank you, Jesus. 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 We worship you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have worship. In Jesus' name, we have worship. In Jesus' name we have worship. Father, thank you once again for gathering in your presence. Thank you for you are here to bless us. Father, as we look into your word, speak expressly. Speak clearly. Cause your people to be blessed. At the end of the day, all glory shall be yours. And we remain blessed people. And the people of the Lord say, hey, hey. and the people of the Lord say, hey, hey. and the people of the Lord say, hey, hey. Amen. Let's have a seat. You are welcome. God bless you all in Jesus' name. The journey of the second half of the year has started. We have started well. We will continue well. And we shall finish well. I say we have started well, we will continue well, and we shall finish well. We have started well, we will continue well, and we shall conclude well. Amen. This morning, by the grace of God, very briefly, I'll be looking at what I've called divine enablement in controlling my environment divine enablement in controlling my environment divine enablement in controlling my environment we talked about the issue of god empowering us because the youth can faint the youth as powerful as they are, they grow weary. Except those who wait upon the law, those are the people that their strength is renewed. So the issue of divine enablement is key because as powerful as the youths are, they weary and they grow weak. So it's beyond physical attainment physical power, physical achievement for you to be empowered to control your environment. And every one of us will live in one environment or the other. When you are a student, there is this scholarly environment you live in. Among your peers, 
And whether you like it or not, they have influence on you. When you start to walk, there is a working environment. Whether you like it or not, it has an influence on you. When you come to a church, it's another environment. And it has its own way of having influence on you. But what we are saying is, in whatever environment you find yourself, good or bad, interesting or not interesting, how do you control your environment in such a way that it glorifies God? Hallelujah. Why am I bringing this in? For those of you who are around in some of the prayer times we had, one of the things I received for Wuse, specifically, you know, I told you this last month of June as we did the exchange of pooping, and I was going to Aquarium Park Church to pray, and I was praying. And God said, do you know what Guardian Park means? I said, I don't know. And as I was praying, you know, I got an acronym for Guardian Park, and I went there and I told the people that I said, this is who you are from this day. If you believe the prophet and you believe he's saying, it will work for you. And I told them, when I was going to Shomolu Church, it was going back home. I had that nudge again. And I got in there, I said, well, for those of you in Shomolu, this is God, what God says you are, believe it. If you say it's your old boy that came back after many years, and you don't believe you're on your own. Hallelujah. And I told them, those who are in church, you know I told you what God in family, that's why it's not good to miss church. I told you what Shimon means. Can you remember? But the way you're looking at me is like you don't remember. How many of you are in church? And you remember I told you what guarding power means? What who's uh means? How many of you are in church? Raise up your hand. Let me see. Uh -huh. Some of you are looking at your notes now. Good. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know it's adult education, no problem. Hallelujah. Eh? Dicky, you want to tell us? You were not in church that day or you were. You can remember now. Look at your note. Look at your note. Adult education, look at your note so that we can the benefit of those who are not around. For Shomolu Swarin Harvest, who can continue? Of multiple opportunities locating us. That's Shomolu. Take the first letters in those words. Swarin Harvest of multiple opportunities locating us. So I went and I told them, that's Shomolu opportunities will come it will locate you is a swearing harvest but you've got to believe it who can tell me what guarding fire is oh yeah those of you are in church oh yeah so that those who didn't come they know that they are missing a lot yes great wealth and resources in numbers eh? personally allocated Great wealth and what and resources in numbers. You put a comma there. Uh, what's the last word? A. Eh? Personally allocated. So I went there and I told them. Now, for those of us in Wuse, what is Wuse? Working under supernatural environments. What did I say? Hey, say it as if you believe it. Say it as if it will work for you. Working under supernatural environment. And that supernatural environment can only be by divine empowerment. Come with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I'll read from verse 32 to 40. 
The Bible said, And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. And David said to Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear. And I took and took a lamb out of the flock. I went after him. I smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by the hair and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. These uncircumcised Philistines shall be as one of them. See, he has defiled the army of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hands of the Philistines. And David said unto, and Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with you. And when Saul armed David with his arm, armor, and put on a helmet of brass and upon his head, so he armed him with a coat of mail. And David gathered his sword upon his armor, and he swore to go, and he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with thee, for I have not proved them. And David put them off, and he took his staff in his hands, and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even as a script, and his string uh, was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Quickly, can we go to Second uh, Kings chapter 7, and let's read the first five verses. Second Kings chapter 7. Can we read the first five verses? The Bible says, Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then the Lord, on whose hands the king lead, answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord will make windows of heaven, might these things be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thy eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. And there were four leprous men at the entrance in the gate. And they said to one another, Why sit we here until we die? And we say, We will, if, if we say, We will enter into the city, then famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore, let us all fall into the hands of the hosts of the Syrian. If they save us, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall die. So they arose in the twine to, to go to the camp of the Syrian. And when they were come to the utmost part of the camp, behold, there was no man there. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Now looking at these two scriptures very quickly, we see the example of David and the example of Elisha. How they control their environment. What was the environment they were in? It was an environment of fear. It was an environment of weariness. It was an environment when everything was not working. Just like some of you are talking of fuel money now. To fuel our cars. And we are thinking electricity bills will still go up very soon. And we are afraid. That was the situation. How did these people 
control their environment. Listen to me, church. There will always be an environment of weariness and fainting. We cannot do without it as long as we are on this part of the earth. Can I hear an amen? Hey, the way you are saying your amen, get us. Can I hear an amen? There will always be things that will challenge us. There will always be things that will make us to be weary. There will always be things that didn't fall in pleasant places as we want it to be. But what I'm saying this morning that God has said, tell my people, we must be people who by divine enablement can control our environment. Goliath has been a man of war. And he came out. And the Bible said for 40 days and 40 nights. I am a Philistine. If any Israelite can come and fight me, and he wins me, he wins. But if I win, I win. And the Bible says the moment he comes out to say that, everybody will run and take cover, even including soldiers. That's why I told you, one day is not a matter of age. And when the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to see that, Look at the spelling of the word bondage. The last three words is A. It says bondage does not require, does not know age. Anybody can be in bondage. It is left for you to know how to deliver yourself. Even the soldiers, they will take over. But there came a man who knows his God. And the Bible says those who know their God they will be powerful, they will be strong. And what shall they do? Who do exploit? So, what do you do? And from the example of David and from the example of Elisha, we we'll see it clearly, clearly, clearly stated. They communicated the word, they spoke the word. The situation there is so tense. What did David say? I can go. Is it my power? No. I have a backup. Say with me, I have a backup. Hey, you are not saying, say, I have a backup. David is saying, I have a backup. You may look at me as a nobody, but my backup is strong. My backup it may be invisible. But it is strong, it's reliable. And they beside it unto the or until those who are supposed to hear they had. So keep saying it. Even when the situation seems to be doing bad, say. Even when it seems things are not falling, blind, say. Until the doctor saw. And so called David. What are you saying? He repeated it. Ah, you are a young boy. Who are you, rare? So David was now able to say bold and clearly. My trust is in what God has done in the past. He gives me the confidence now. He gives me the confidence in the future. Can I hear an amen? So the issue is. What can you look back and say, this is what God has done? He gives you the confidence for now and the assurance for the future. So David was able to say, I was watching my father's flock. So the question is, what are you doing? If you are lazy, if you are idle, if you are not doing anything, you don't have a testimony. Is someone listening to me? Hey, is someone listening to me? What are you doing? What are you doing? Some of all, we are so lazy fair, doing nothing. And we just stay, just by confessing, I confess, I confess. It's not going to work that way. You must be doing something. 
And when you are confessing it, some things confront you. Then you confront it by with your confession. And then you walk in that uh, warfare. And when you win, you say, yes, I move a step forward. So what are you doing? David said, I was watching over my father's foot. He was doing something. So please don't be idle. Some of you, you come to church, you are not doing anything. And when pastor starts to run after you, do something, it's like pastor is too hard. You know what you are doing? You are not giving yourself opportunity to have a confrontation that you can fight something and win. And you hold on to it and say, yes, I have overcome this one. Oh, yeah, the next one, come, I'm ready. Can I hear amen? Hey, can I hear an amen? Hey, can I hear an amen? David said, I was watching over my father's sheep. It is when you are doing something that confrontation comes. If you are doing nothing, the devil doesn't worry about you. You are a nobody. May you not be a nobody. Okay, point to me. Say, I shall be a nobody. I shall not be a nobody. I shall not be a nobody. He said, when I was doing that, a responsibility has been given to me. A duty I need to command has come to me. Confrontation came. That wants to make me fail. Boldness came from within. And I know that boldness is done by my path. So that's it. The Lord. So you see him referring to God. That's the communication. He's saying it. It was firm. It was focused. It was directed. So the communication must be firm in faith for today. He must be focused for the future for tomorrow. Firm for today, focus for the future. Firm for today, focus for the future. That was how David was able to control his environment. Before I go to Elisha quickly, even Saul, who has told him that go, the Lord be with you. Do you know he still came and said, take my garment, take my helmet, take my deeds. And the Bible says, David put them on. He couldn't walk. He's a boy. You are putting the helmet of a full grown on a teenager to go to work. Oh, the cool already. Because he will move his he will not be able to move his legs. And I love that he said, I have not tested this. Listen to me. What have you tested that you can hold on to? David has tested the name of the Lord. <laughs> he has tested the power of the Lord. He knows his potent. I have tested the name of the Lord. I have tested the power in that name. It has worked in time past. I'm firmly sure it worked yesterday. So I have a focus. It will work tomorrow. They say I have not tested thee. So he put it aside. Listen to me. Those weapons that you think cannot work when God is in me. It works miraculously. <laughs> That's why just stones and sling can kill Goliath even with all his weapons. Read your Bible very well. Almost five verses were used to describe the weapon of Goliath in 1 Samuel 17. The five, if not six, verses. The helmet is like this. The garment is like this. The sword is like this. The dishon is like this. The shield is like this. But it took just a stool. <laughs> a stool that has the power of God behind it. Can you say to yourself, I am not a nobody. <laughs> I am somebody in Christ. Hey, say, I am not a nobody. I am somebody in Christ. Communicating the word to control your environment because it will come tough, hard. You know the rest of the story. 
Let me quickly go to Elisha. There was famine in the land. What we are going through is similar to famine, no? You know, somebody sang it many, many years ago. That's not the way he sang it. That's the way I will sing it before it doesn't constant. Amen. That was the When he sang that song, the person as bad as him. He said, Look, people are living in houses, not the houses they like to live, is the ones that is just available. To they are eating food, not the food they want to eat, but that's the one that is available. They are wearing clothes, not the one they will have wanted to wear, but that's the one that is available, so they have no choice. God, come and save us. So that's how he sang that song. Many, many years ago, he sang it. But that's the reality today. But I prophesy to you, you will live in the house you want to live in. You will wear the clothes you want to wear. You will eat the food you want to eat. In the name of Jesus. I'm talking about divine empowerment. Divine enablement to be able to control the environment. So Elisha said, Hear thou the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord is saying. Communication of the word. And he repeated it simply because he was sure of what was said. There is a firm testing of that word in time past. And there is the assurance he's going to walk in the future. Hear thou the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord is saying. By this time tomorrow. Communicating the word. Looking at the potency of the word. Looking at the possibility of what the world can do. Hallelujah. Family. Because of what you have seen God do. Focus on the future. Because you know what you will do. So we see. From the example of David and Elisha. From the passages that we have read. How they communicated the world. In faith. For the day and how they focus on the future for tomorrow based on the potency and the power that they know of the word of God. So listen to me, church. We live in times when it's only the just that shall live by faith. Can I hear an amen? Hey, can I hear an amen? Can I hear an amen? Only the just shall live by faith. And when I say that, the faith will walk by faith and you see God opening opportunities for you. Beyond what you imagine. Beyond what you can think of. they communicated the word. They stood by the word. So we learned that from David and Elisha. What are we to do? So I call that the examples. What are the exercises that we must do? Because looking at the example, we are drilled. But what are the exercises that we must do? Say with me. Praying and fasting. The way you are talking, you get get a I say praying and fasting. Say it's praying and fasting. Say it again, praying and fasting. In Psalm 69, verse 10, one of the phrases there, David was saying something. He said, I humble myself in fasting. 
Psalm 69, verse 10. I humble myself in fasting. One of the things that we don't do in our modern day, we pray. But we have put the issue of fasting at Abeya. And I'm going to combine the two. Maybe I should talk of praying for before I come to fast. Now, for all the exercise we must do, I said is praying and fasting. Now, our praying is not your praying, Sha. It is praying. You know, let me use the word. For those of you who are the Holy Spirit refreshing vision. You know, when you look at the theme text that we use, Exodus chapter 2, and media, I want you to project it, verses 22, 23, or 23, 24. Now, it, it describes how the Israelites pray when they had their challenge. Exodus chapter 2, 22, 23. Okay, and it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of they sigh by reason of the bondage. Now they cry, and their cry came up unto God by reason of their bondage. The next verse is that yeah, and God had their what, their what, their what. Their prayer or their cry was groaning. So it's not your praying, Sha. It's praying to a point when you know yourself, it is groaning. It is what? You are not talking. It is what? It is what? It is what? And you are now, you know what it means to groan. It is when something don't touch you for boon, well, well. That's when you grow. For some of us, you know, we pray, shy. Hey, God will do it. I know He will do it. Oh, yeah, God do it. Oh, yeah, God do it. But when they take, catch you to your bone, where, where? You grow. When that bondage was so hard on them, they did not only cry, they grow. And the Bible says, God had them. Those days, when we started in Shomolu Church, they used to call us crying church. Because you pray to a point, you just start to cry. Groaning. But today, some of us are so psyched. Psy Which one is that? Uh, psychedelic. That for you to cry even before God is a problem. How should tears come out of my eye? Uh, okay. I'm talking about praying. Groaning. Because you want God to intervene. We must get back to that. If we want to if we want to control our environment. Because this environment is tough. It is hard. They cry. They groan. God had them. That's the level of prayer we need now. Because it's easy to confess. It's not easy to grow. But the Lord will grant us the grace. Hey, say amen. I said the Lord will grant us the grace. Hey, I said the Lord will grant us the grace. To grow. Then followed by fasting. And I started from Isaiah 69 10. David said, I humbled my soul in fasting. Now, you know the most, uh, what word do I use now? Come with me to, Gen uh, to Matthew chapter 17, very quickly. Matthew chapter 17. And media, get ready, you're going to give me various translations. Now let's start with the King James Version. Matthew 17, and let's look at verse 20, 21, 22. 
Matthew 17. Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Remove, hence and yon, to yonder play, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. 21. How be this kind goeth not out? By what? Verse 22. And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men. Now give me the NIV translation from verse 20. He replied, Because you have so little faith, I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Next verse. Did you see that he omitted verse 21? Hello? Did you see that there is no verse 21 there? Okay? Give me the New Living Translation from verse 20. New Living Translation. Hallelujah. Okay, do I have anybody in the congregation? You have New Living Translation. Can you read? If you are allowed, read that. Is it there now? You don't have New Living Translation. Media. You don't have space. Is is what? Oh yeah, read. Okay, sorry. Oh uh, yeah, read. Okay. 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 Good. Yes. Verse twenty one. Do you have it? That's where I'm going. Now. Bible translators will tell us in the original this and that. Let's leave that to theologians. We are not here to debate the rightness or wrongness of it. But the issue is the issue of fasting and prayer. Just as they removed it in other translations, a lot of us, we are removing it out of our life. So tell people to fast today. You know I have also. Hey! I'm talking fasting and what? Even the way you are answering me, say, get us to be. I'm talking about what? Just that they removed it there. You know, it's only King James and New King James. You see, verse 21. Every other translation is not there. That's why we are also trying to remove it out of our life. But the Bible says, there are some things that will not go except by what? And you know, you put fasting before you put prayer. Did you see it in that scripture? You put fasting you know, before prayer. He didn't say prayer and fasting. He said fasting and what? Is that not what we read? Okay, prayer and fasting. Uh, whichever you want. You see, you want to join the group of those who will pray and without fast. Have you? Eh? So listen to me, John. We must go back to fasting. What am I saying? You hear me? We must go back to fasting. What did I say? I want to watch your mouth whether you are talking. Say we must go back to fasting. Say we must go back to fasting. Some of you are not talking. Say we must go back to fasting. 
we must go back. We must go back. These things shall not be except by prayer and by what? Fasting. We must go back to it. It, it must be deliberate. It must be what? Listen to me. You see, when you don't have money, it's easy to fast. Me, I know it. Because when you don't have money, say, I turn it to fast. I turn it to fast. Now, money, you know, they, it's poverty. But now that you have food in your fridge, in your freezer, in your deal, and you have to choose what to eat, it takes discipline to fast. Am I talking? But that one say, well done. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of you that I see here, God has blessed you. You have come to a point, it's not that uh, uh, you don't have food to eat, I want to turn it to fast. That's why it's becoming difficult. Because when you open your free, you will see all those things there, and they'll be looking at you. Hey, oh yeah, oh yeah. Even when you don't want to eat, say, ah, you see, they told me it's not good to have empty stomach. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's go back. It's one of the ways by which we can control our environment. Because when your spirit is alive, you know Paul says, I bring my body under subjection. First Corinthians 9, 27. I bring my body under subjection. And when you do that, your spirit and your soul is lifted up. You are able to receive signals. You are able to be sensitive. And it cuts off a lot of things. Hallelujah. I've told you the examples. I'm just stressing the exercise. I don't have all the time. Because now my media have developed. They are now showing me what time minutes I have to preach. No problem. <laughs> I will adjust. You are, you are clapping. Don't worry. You know I still have the microphone. If I disobey them, I'm saying there's nothing they will do. You know I'm in charge. And you are clapping for them. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the exercises... I will, I will not stress too much. Let me just stay on fasting and prayer. We must go back to eat. And don't tell me you cannot fast. Don't tell me what? Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. I don't want to believe that. Because what is fasting? Deny yourself. Thank God these days, self, to eat three square meals. It's not easy. So if you are eating two square meals, start by skipping one. Can I hear an amen? Start by skipping one. If you are able to skip one, then you can skip two. Hello? The way some of you are looking at me. I said if you can skip one, then you can skip two. Is that also? From there you can skip three, you can skip four. Lord, have mercy. I said the Lord will have mercy. Listen to me. See, these are spiritual exercises we must do. We can't run away from it. That's the truth. We cannot run away from it. I know it's not easy, but we must do it. Say amen. Say amen. We must do it. I know I will get this response. That's why I want to stay. I don't want to do all that exercises. Prayer and fasting. If that only one is enough. Because it makes you to be sensitive. You know, there are some things that happen. You may not, it may not make meaning to you, but you, you, are, you, you are just a, 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 a step ahead. Those of you who are here on Thursday, Thursday or Friday, when I said we should pray for against fire. And you know, immediately after I was saying electrocution and whatever, I didn't know that God was saying something about the future. 
Was it not the following day, our chairman of our education committee called me, where we had our school in Harakot. There was a man doing um, uh, event center at the back. Instead of him to get a pole to put his electric whatever, he nailed it to the wall. I think there is a leakage. One of the students on our own side, that placed hand on the wall. That was how he was almost electrocuted. He took God. But when the, when the chap person was calling me, you know one of the things that gave me my joy? A day before we are praying. God saw it. God saw it. That's what I'm talking about. You have an advantage. So when those, uh, I learned those parents of that, they said they go to one church. They don't, they don't go to hospital. Their hand is already swelling. I say, better tell them to go to hospital. If they are not going, child person, go and get a lawyer to write those people. Because of your negligence, this and this has happened. So if anything is going to happen, that is our letter. See, we are pulling a case of negligence on their part. We are not the culprit. But listen to me, church. That is how you get advantage. That's how you get advantage. That's how you get advantage. I told you I'm preaching today, not because I want to preach. If I didn't fast and pray that day and pray for three days, no food, no water, I won't be preaching. And God knows what will have happened. I know I won't be as good as I am now. Because I'm not regretting it. Maybe that simple obedience is what has opened doors for the family. That's what I'm talking about. But let's ask for the grace. Let's do what? I'm talking about divine enablement to be able to control our environment. So if you are in your place of work and it's becoming tough and hard, set some time off. Go to this spiritual exercise. Take charge of your environment. Demand of God what you want to happen there. Cry to God. Grow. And let's see what God will do. You know the Bible says, Elijah is a man subject to like passion like oh, Is that not so? Is that not what the Bible says? He prayed. And what he prayed for came to pass. Let there be no rain. There was no rain. You and I, we can get to that level to control your environment. To control your environment. Other people may not know what is happening. But you know, in your own environment, you know what is happening. Because you are in charge. Divine enablement in controlling our environment. Let's be on our feet. Let me stop there. I want us to pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. begin to pray. So like I said, the starting point, skip a meal. Hmm? Do what? Skip a meal. You won't die. From there, skip two meals. Okay? From there, at least have one day a week to fast. How many days a week? At least one day. At least start from there. One day in a week. And if it's possible, that whole day, make it 24 hours until the next day. Hey. Hello, hello. Uh, listen, listen. It's fake clap. Some of you, it's fake clap. You are clap. Listen. The more this is why I need to stress it. We are going to pray. But listen, how do you say you are growing spiritually? How do you measure it? Answer, how do you measure it? No, how do you measure it? It's by some spiritual exercises you take to do. It's by some spiritual exercises you do. 
It's not just in prayer and fasting alone. It could be in studying of God's word and so on. But the one that is put in my spirit to talk about today is prayer and fasting. So let me stress it very well. Because the way some of you are looking at me now, you get as it be. But by the grace of God, I'm your pastor. And I must be ready to tell you what is the truth. Fire, listen to me. Don't do your own preaching there. And you know, apart from me, medical science tells us when you fast, it also has its own health benefits. It has its own health benefits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's grow. That's what I'm saying. Let's grow. It's not easy. It's not easy. Especially if you want to do a long fight, it's not easy. Your first one, two days is terrible. But if you are able to scale the first two days, you are good to go. You are good to go, I can tell you that. Your major problem is your first two days because your body cannot easily adjust. Hey, I've been used to taking this and this and that. But if you are able to scale the first two days, you are ready to go. Is someone listening to me? So when Bashiru comes here and tells you he passed 40 days, 40 nights, he's not an angel. He's a human being like you. And like me too. Can I hear an amen? You can grow to be like him. <laughs> you didn't say amen to that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, by his grace. Thank you, by his grace. So I want us to talk to God. I want us to talk to God. You know, I'm talking of uh, uh, controlling your environment. I'm saying it based on the fact that we are Wuse. And what is Wuse? What is Wuse? What is Wuse? What is Wuse? Walking under supernatural environment. That's who you are. That's who I am. No environment should be able to control us. We control our environment. That's who we are. And that's how we need to walk. Shoulder high by the grace of God. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. What does it say? Isaiah 1 19. Are you connected to the online church of the unlimited people? Join Foursquare Wuse on all our social media platforms to get real-time updates on services, stream live programs from any part of the world, watch previous messages, join Christian topical conversations, and get a chance to win some prizes. Foursquare Wuse is live on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can connect with us via your phone social media applications. How? Select Facebook app on your phone app list and search for Foursquare Wuse. Open it and click on like. For Twitter, select Twitter app, search for Foursquare Wuse. Open it and click on follow. For Instagram, select Instagram app, search for Foursquare Wuse. Open it and click on follow. And for YouTube, select YouTube app on your phone, search for Foursquare Wuse. Open it and click on subscribe. If you don't have any of these apps on your phone, Go to your Play Store for Android devices or go to your Apple Store for iOS devices. Search for any of these social media apps and install them. After installation, you will need to log in with your app account username and password. And if you don't have an account with them yet, you will need to register. Click on Create an Account and fill in your basic information and get connected. First Square Gospel Church will say, we are the assembly of the unlimited people.